Today I'm going to show you how you could create your own CocoaPods library using the CocoaPod library template. There are several ways you could distribute code with other developers. First, you could create a static library or dynamic library. You could also create a Swift package. We also have XE framework as a multi-platform option. Then CocoaPods, which is a dependency manager primarily made for Objective-C and Swift projects. It was built with Ruby and it was released on September 2011. Creating your own CocoaPods is easy by following a few steps. First, by making sure you have CocoaPods installed, then creating a pod library using a template. Then you add your code, and followed by customizing the pod spec. And lastly, pushing your pod to a Git repository. For the first step, I'll show you the steps you need to follow in installing CocoaPods using the terminal. Here, I'll open a terminal window, then I'll type sudo gem install CocoaPods. sudo is just telling the system that the installation will require elevated privileges and it's only needed during installation. sudo is the super user or admin in other cases. Once the installation is done, you can check if the installation went well by running the pod version command in the terminal. If CocoaPods installed properly, then the version number should print on the screen. Now let's create our CocoaPods library. There are multiple ways you can create the library. The first option is you can use an existing Xcode project where your library is and configure it as a pod library. The other way is using the pod library template. In this demo, I'll use the template instead of creating it from scratch. Now open the terminal on the folder where you want to save your project. Then in the terminal, type podlibcreate. Then pass the name of the library. We will call this library my CocoaPods library. Then hit return. CocoaPods will clone the template from GitHub. If in the future you want to use your own template, you can pass the URL of the repository containing a compatible template. You can add dash dash then template URL then equals your git URL. So right now we are prompted to choose if the library is for iOS or Mac OS. I'm going to type iOS then hit enter. Then we are asked for the language. I'll type Swift then hit return. Typing lowercase is fine. Then another interesting question is asked. Would you like to include a demo application with your library? I would recommend to include a demo app. That way you can quickly see how the library will look and perform when integrated into a project. But it's optional. So I'll choose yes to include a demo, then hit return. For now, I will not include a testing framework. So none, then return. Would you like to do a view-based testing? No, since I don't need it, then return. Now CocoaPods will set up the project and automatically open it for us. Now we have an iOS project with a local development pod. In the pod group, you can find the license file, the readme, and pod spec. I'll get back to the pod spec shortly. Let's create our library class first. I'm going to create a new Swift file and call it logger. And make sure I'm saving it in the classes folder. I'm going to create a logger class. I'll add an initializer. 
Then a couple of methods. First, the uh, print log that will just print hello world. The second method, I'll call it private method to print private. I'll make the class public, including the initializer and print log methods. Now I'll remove the replace me file since it's just a placeholder. I'm gonna head over to the iOS project and open the view controller. Before I'm going to import this pod, I'm going to build this project first so that the auto completion is available for the pod library. Next, I'm going to create an instance of the logger. Then call the print log method. Okay, so how about calling the private method? It's obvious we can't access the private method because it's not set to the public access modifier. You may encounter scenarios like this where a method, class, or property is meant to be public but you could not access it. Now I'm going to run this project and see if the pod and integration is working. We can see that the log is printing hello world and that's good enough for me since we just have a simple library. Let's head over to the CocoaPods library. I'm going to add a flower image because I want to show you how you could add and use assets in your pods. I'll add the flower image in the assets folder. The structure or organization of the files or folders is not strict. It is up to you to use the suggested structure, then add more folders or create your own. Let's head over to the podspec file and I'll briefly talk about the common configurations there. A podspec describes a version of a pod library. The files and resources to include in the library is defined here as well as dependencies. The podspec can be created in the terminal using the podspec create command. In the spec, we have the name of the library, the version, then a quick summary. A long description block can be added in between these description tags. The lines that are commented are optional specs, where at a later time you may need to set it with an appropriate value. And to tell more about the library author, you could add the home page, author name, and social media links. The source attribute is where you put the location of the source, such as the git URL and the tag of the git repo. In the source underscore files spec, we tell CocoaPods where are the source file for this library. In this case, it is in the classes folder. If this is an Objective-C library, you may also need to provide the path to the header files as well. The framework spec is where you indicate what framework this library will need. And if this pod library is using any other pod library, you can indicate that in the dependency spec. I'm going to uncomment the resource underscore bundles. Since I have added the flower image, and I want this bundle available to the library user. I'm going to make sure that it is referencing the correct file. Resources are organized in bundles. Those are folders that you sometimes see which ends with dot bundle in the end. In our demo, it's going to be called resources bundle. So I'll rename the my CocoaPods library bundle name to resources. 
I'll reinstall the pod so that it will include the new file. Now I'm going to run this project. Now back into the view controller, we are going to use the flower image and see if we can reference it. Before we do that, let's head over to the app bundle to explore the framework and resource bundle. I'm going to right click the app in the products group, then show it in Finder. I'll right click the app package and show package contents. In the frameworks folder, we can see the MyCocoaPods library framework. Then inside, you can see our resources bundle. Then we can view the flower image by right clicking the bundle and show package contents. Now we can see the flower image here and we're sure it is included in the bundle. Now back in the view controller, before I could load the image from the bundle, I would need to create a bundle object representing the framework bundle. Then we will get the path to the resources bundle. Then using the resources path, we will create another bundle object using that path. Now we're going to create the image. I'll pass the file name, then the resource bundle. I'll build a project now and see if we can load the image. All right, we can see that uh, we were able to load the image from the resources bundle. In your library, you may want to create helper methods that will help load resources from the resources bundle so that the developer will not have to worry about it. Okay. Let's run a validation for this pod to make sure we provided the information it needs. I'm going to open a terminal at the root of the pod and run the podliblint command. Okay, it has given us several warnings. It says the summary is not meaningful. Okay, let me just change the summary a bit. I'm going to type, this is a meaningful summary of my pod. This will just be a placeholder summary while we should make sure that we are actually adding a meaningful summary in our pods. The last warning is asking me to indicate the Swift version supported by this. So I'll just use Swift underscore version attribute and pass in version 5.0. I'm going to run the validation again. Okay, now finally our pod passed the validation and it's ready to be pushed to the repository. In Xcode, I'm going to push this project to the remote kit repository. I'm going to commit my changes. Then I'm going to set the remote URL. 
In the source control navigation, I'm going to right click to add an existing remote. In the location, I'm going to paste in the git URL, then click add. In the master branch section, I'll right click to add a tag. I'll set 0 0.1 dot zero as a tag which is following the semantic versioning format. Remember that the same tag will be referenced in the pod spec and it will be used by CocoaPods later to clone this project as indicated in the pod file by the developer. In the source control menu I will click push so that a copy is sent to GitHub. Now this pod is ready for distribution and there are many ways you can distribute this code. Sharing it through CocoaPods for public use is one, and the other is setting up your own CocoaPod repository. Public distribution refers to publishing your library to the CocoaPods repository. You may want to watch the video on how to create a private CocoaPod library or submit your pod to the CocoaPods public repo on this channel. On this video, I just showed you how you could easily create your own CocoaPod library and make it ready for distribution. Please support this channel by subscribing and enabling the bell icon for notifications. If you like this video, please leave a like and invite your friends to subscribe and watch this tutorial.